we speak, magic happens. We are able to express ourselves. We are able to identify our problems and provide solutions. Then we get a reward. When we don't speak, we shrink. When we speak, we expand ourselves. When we don't speak, we are traumatized. It was a sunny day in the Philippines. I was near the door of the kitchen, looking at the gate where my father was standing up. Then, there was a knock on the door. Excuse me, sir. Is June there? Can I please talk to her? And he answered, It's not. She's not here. I, I was looking at the scene. The guy knows I'm there. He knows I was there. But he did not want me to speak with this man because he is is a strict father. He does not want me to have any boyfriend. <laughs> that was the first time I learned how difficult it is not to be able to speak. Because even if I don't speak out loud, inside my mind, I am speaking. And this is what I'm saying. How could he do this, which is a judgment, a fear, of someone trying to suppress me. Another thing I thought about, he can't do this to me. He's supposed to love me, but maybe that's his way of loving me. But no, I know it's wrong. Within this conflict, it's creating a stress within myself. It's, I kind of kept divided within myself. One part of me says, yes, it's okay because that's your father. He's supposed to love you. Everything he does is okay. But one part of me is saying, no, you got to speak up because that is your right as a human being. And within these conflicting ideas and beliefs in my mind, I grew older and come to meet a man who is a little bit in the angry side. We have maids in the Philippines. And when we go to the kitchen, we ask them, can you please get the fruit salad from the refrigerator? from the freezer. Normally, fruit salads in the Philippines are frozen. They're never cooked. So my husband, my ex-husband, asked her, would you be able to please get us some fruit salad? We have guests. We're playing mahjong. Mahjong is a Chinese um, game. And she said, OK. And she went in. But then my ex-husband was saying, but it was an hour ago. It's, it's very easy to get that fruit salad from the refrigerator. And it's frozen and it's okay. Then I looked. I said, what's going on here? So, so I said, where is the fruit salad? And she said, I'm still cooking it. I said, cooking it? You know, it's supposed to be frozen. And so I went back and I said, she's cooking it. And everyone laughed. And my husband, you know, how can you do that? How don't you know that this fruit salad is not to be cooked? How can you, how can you not understand? And I was looking at him and comparing my father to him. And I was like, oh, man. You know, I don't want to be in the position of that maid. So I grew up 
having this fear of men who would speak up loudly, you know. I would, I have this fear of people who speak up loudly. And then I met a man. His name is Leon. And he is very, very soft-spoken. And I thought, man, this is the man for me. What I'm doing, really, is I'm coming from a negative to a positive, And in that way, I'm trying to say, I have progress. But no, it wasn't me. It was just this man in my life that is progressing. In fact, what I'm doing is coming from one end of one pole into the other end of the other pole. It's the same pole. So every time there is a man that is angry, I react. Every time there's a man who's soft-spoken, hi. Oh, I am very pleased to be in the vicinity of that man. But then I realized, no, I'm gonna change. And then I changed. I forgave myself for this positive and negative connections. What I found out is I connected the word speak to a positive word which means freedom and to a negative word which means slave. So forgiven all this, I'm more stable. I was able to express myself in those masters. I was able to identify the problem, provide the solution, and redefine the word speak. And I know that when you speak,